Food Fighters. All my life on XFM 104.9 on Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Hello. of course, Carl Pilkington. Ooh, have we got a shoe for you today? <laughs> what have we got planned? Oh, we got planned? Really? Oh, we got lo planned? Oh, Come on. Oh, loads of stuff and it, two hours of it. Right. And all the records. But specifically, what sort of stuff have you planned for us? Because I know you've been what working have you hard. Done? What have you done? Because I, well, you know, I've been busy this week. I've been yeah. house hunting, I've been uh, various things, but I know you've had the whole week off. Right. So what have you been up to, Mike? Go on, Carl. Carl, tell them what we've got. Tell them what you've. what we've planned, all the stuff you've done. What have you got? But Rick, specifically, what have you come up with? Um, quick, 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 because people I'm, are getting bored. Tell us okay. what you've- I've come up come with, with, um, the music. Right. I've yeah. got, obviously that's- we've already planned that. We planned that last week, so that's all done, but what have you yourself contributed to today's show? I'm looking I forward got to a, it. I got a, um, mm -hmm. uh, a text message today from right. Ross Noble. You know, Ross Noble the comedian. Mm -hmm. Who's mm -hmm. on- who's on- oh, I've got news for you. Right. Like that. He says, ask Carl if he woke up with ladies' boobs, <laughs> would he just put a dress on and live as a lady? Or will he just be a man, but with these boobs? Carl, it's a good question. <sighs> I know, I know that happened to Ross. <laughs> so he's, he's throwing that one out. At it you. did in a way because he ate pizzas for a yeah, year, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. And he got a lovely pair of breasts. Yeah. Go on. Probably the boobs. Just find a, a loose fitting jumper. Go to the doctor's. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to the doctor? How would you explain this phenomenon to the doctor? So you'd be you'd be happy with this because you believe in um, shite, like no, no, you know, no, happening. No, no. Go on, but what? it can happen because I told you a couple of weeks ago how it can happen. What? How you can wake up with breasts if you're a fella. I told you. Go on. Haven't you remembered? No, I, I, I funny that, isn't it? Go on. Have you, Steve? No, I, I don't remember this. Did, did you tell us on air? Yeah. Um, it can happen if you go to Argentina and have a steak. <laughs> you can wake up with breasts. <laughs> Because, <laughs> because I'm I, sure I'd have remembered Carl, that. Pull the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he likes that. He likes that. Is joke. that what you've come up with, Ben? <laughs> yeah, that joke. Yeah. Brilliant. Play a record. It's going to be a dynamite show. <laughs> oh, the oh, other oh listen. One. Look, we're going to play. I'm going to play some classic tunes today. I'm going to educate the youngsters, Steve. Uh -huh. Right now, you've all heard of Lou Reed. You've all heard of Velvet Underground. But you know, have you heard of Venus in Furs, Carl? Shiny, shiny, shiny boots of leather. <laughs> Venus in Furs. Velvet Underground. Mm. What a great start. What a classic song. I mean, song. They, they continue to sound fresh and contemporary. Yeah. Is this, do you know what that song's about, Carl? No. m and S. M and S. It's about m and S. You know that? Yeah. You know the shop? Yeah. It's all about that. Yeah. Whiplash, smile and all that. All the things you can get at Marks and Spencer's. Shiny boots of leather. Yeah. Being whipped. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a new division they've opened up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we have got a great show lined up, man. We know, go we on. know we have. No, no, because we've got um, uh, Rockbusters coming up. The great Rock, new looking quiz. Forward to that. Uh, that that's that's made the press. Has it? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, Frimley Tea Rooms uh, newsletter <laughs> mentioned it. Um, we've also got um, that's Carl's local, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've also got uh, educating Ricky, where Carl educates, educates me. Uh, the one last week. A girl, right? She was deaf, and she was had an argument with her mum. And she pushed her, and she hit her head, and then she can hear again. Yeah. Don't know what I learned from that. No. But it might be, it might be subliminal. Someone might be going. It might, it might be a metaphor that I will learn from. Yeah, it's like you know, a I'm parable. Like, yeah, yeah. So uh, look at this face. We, so, might uh, as well, we might as well be talking Dutch, mightn't we, Carl? Say something quick. It's radio. I, I, I don't understand what you want from me. Oh, we're only joking. Right. So. Educating Ricky, I, I've worked a bit harder this week. We've got some good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the the the, the, the teaser headlines the later. Headlines in a bit. Yeah. We so you've got, got you've got rockbusters. Carl's well. having a bit of a stressful week because he thinks he's not appreciated because he's he he's gets in at what time do you get in? About eight or nine, don't you? About well, last yeah, I've been busy this week. I've been in at about half past eight in the morning. Yeah, and been leaving when? About half past eight, nine o'clock at night. <sighs> yeah, you yeah. in Saturday. Yeah, I'm in now. You get paid, don't you? I'm busy at home. At a lot home. of people work late, Carl. A lot of people work 12 hour days. Why are you busy at home, Carl? What are you up to? Because we're trying to sort out a move. Uh huh. I've been trying to call around this morning to get someone to buy a, a food on, on a table from me. Yes. Um. Well, we could put that appeal out now, couldn't we? If anyone wants to buy a futon or a table. Just what's think, a, what's a, a futon that Carl Pilkington exactly. slept on. How much are you, uh, you asking? <sighs> Whatever. Uh, well, you need for to be the well, two. You've got, to, you've got to take the two. I don't want, like, different people coming round and that. Sure. Wasting you've your got time. to buy a futon on a table. It's uh, quite specific, isn't it? Someone <laughs> has to want a futon. Yeah, the the specific uh, futon you're selling like like made, isn't it? Alarm <laughs> clock and tea maker. This is yeah. futon and table. <laughs> yeah. Um. Looking for about, about 100 quid. And yeah. it's good. It's good condition. The food yeah, on. Yeah. yeah. Right. No stains. You haven't pissed no. yourself in the. In, no. No. Right. Nothing. 
And what uh, kind of table, what sort of table is it? are we talking? Are we talking like a table for a lounge, a, a dining table? No, for, for uh, like a computer and uh, just, you know, something. Have you got any drawers? Are there no any drawers? drawers? There's no drawers. No, it's just a nice wooden table. Right, uh, is it, is it kind of oak or is it sort of an Ikea sort of thing? No, it's like oakish. It's oakish? Yeah. Okay. So, hundred quid. The food one is just, it was just, just a mattress and the, and the, and the, the, the pallets. Yeah. Just yeah, but it's not. You see, you get cheap food on. This you? is but a good this, one. This is, is a good one. It, it's how much would that have retailed for when you I purchased it? I think I paid it? about two fifty for it. Right, so it's a bargain. Well, for people. if you look at it, if you and how long have you had it? How old? How old this is it? This is a whole new strand. Well, isn't I'm it? thinking. This I don't is think a it's legal. I think I well, don't think we should I'll use. I tell you what, I'm interested in, in Rick. It's just just finding out a little bit about the sort of thing that Carl's got in his home. You know, I, I'm interested in pe if people will phone up to spend a hundred pounds just to go round Carl's house. No, no, no. I won't be. No. What? No, 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 they'll come here, I'll bring it to work and they can pick it up here. Don't I'm okay. gonna bring a, fut a futon you. and a table to work. Don't you ride a bike so, hold to on, work? we need someone with a van now. <laughs> yeah. So we need- is, is anyone who wants to- <laughs> but they're not allowed around your house. Can they meet you next door? Someone with a van- <laughs> <laughs> Could they meet you in your street somewhere? Hold on, could they meet what you- What about the little Chinese fellow that lives across the road on the two bouncers and the old woman who's dead reading a book? Can- can- could you meet him somewhere- I've got an idea. What about if you meet at the end of your street, you blindfold them like they do when- <laughs> when they- when terrorists <laughs> take the negotiator to the, uh, yeah, to the, the hideout. The, the big cheese. And, um, and so you could do that and in, and so, you know, they- they could piece together. Maybe where you live With from sounds. the sounds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what about that, Carl? That's that's just a great idea. Yeah. And would you sign the futon for people? Do you think? Would you uh, would you give them a little signature? Or maybe you at least a bill of purchase? Couldn't you? you could sign the pallet. <sighs> yeah. Or I could try and get work to buy it off me, and then we give it away for rockbusters. Would do you think they do that? Do you think they do? I think probably do it for Foxy with his with yeah. his big. Well, hog. imagine how big that. Imagine would be. if he wanted to sell his hog. Yeah. That is a motorbike, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been selling his hog for money for years, <laughs> yeah. hasn't he? Oh dear. So oh, right. well, we'll see about that. So, so uh, if people are interested, maybe email uh, Ricky at xfm dot co dot uk if you're interested in by, a futon by Carl's and, futon and, uh, competition. One hundred pounds <laughs> O N O. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what gear have we got? Anyway? I never knew what that meant. <laughs> o N O. I I thought it went sort of oh, on no. the nose. Oh, no. Oh, no. On the nose. <laughs> oh, that's oh, good. Yeah. 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 Um, well, we got. Well, tell you what, we got got to give away, Steve. So actually, I have to say, you've excelled yourself we've got this the, week. Richard Ashcroft's single coming up soon. After <laughs> this, go on. <laughs> when have you? Since when have you taken to talking like that? <laughs> it does amuse me. <laughs> go on. Um, this is actually this is a nice little collection here. This is a three DVD set. Uh, David Attenborough's uh, The Life of Birds, Trials of Life, and Life in the Freezer. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a selection of uh, animal based documentaries. Yeah. Uh, we've got and this what is best at. Well, absolutely. This I is when he uh, goes off the ball and does like uh, fast cars. This is, uh, very, very good indeed. This is, uh, a best of David Bowie compilation. It is a very good, just it's a uh, proper one. Not the, not the rubbish ones that no one else wanted. This is a brilliant compilation. Yeah, it's got excellent selection on there. Uh, we've got this. Now, this looks like a madness. Oh, no, 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 no. It's far worse than we could possibly have imagined. Is it, it seems to be some kind is it of tie-in with the Our House Madness musical. And it's got a, 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 well, ca a cast of twenty people who wanted to be singers. Uh, I c it's tricky to find out. I can't figure out if it's the originals or not. But needless to say, if you're a Madness fan, I'm sure that'd be an absolute treat. Yeah, you love treat. that. You love that. Uh, love that. now I know that, uh, Steve, I wouldn't mind that DVD collection myself. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> That's it's true, the giveaways that, no, we can't. We I'm can't. talking of great compilations. What about this? It's Country Legends. I'm oh, seeing on the front right. there Glenn Campbell. We've got Dolly Parton. We've got, um, what should we call it? On the on the car on the front. What do we call it? <laughs> from, from a great performer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jake, uh, what do we call it? Oh, excellent! Some great yeah. hits from him. So uh, yeah. that's there as well. well that, what a collection. That's the uh, same XFM compilation again. Easy to get hold of. If but you the big are in one, the, the big one, the film that Carl um, well, picks it. every week, the, the DVD big one. movie this week. Don't Carl. go out tonight if you've got a DVD player and a television set because no? you'll be staying in and watching this fantastic film. It will tear your soul apart. It's Hellraiser, <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> original <laughs> Hellraiser. Bear in mind, it has been on Channel Four and Channel. Five and on most cable channels <laughs> since it came out. <laughs> but if you haven't seen it, if you're one of the only people who has not seen it, <laughs> and of course you have to be over 18 to play, then you can win Hellraiser. That is fantastic. Well, uh, play, play, a, play a song, Carl. We'll come okay. back to that. More, more great stuff. Indeed. The competition coming up later. Email only, isn't it, Carl? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Futon. <laughs> a futon still available. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft, check the meaning. Well, Carl, you're chuffed, aren't you? So what's right, happened? Yeah. What's just happened? Tell the listeners what's this happened. This is sparked off a bit. Steve's just called up. He's uh, putting an offer for the foot on and yeah. the table. Yeah. Um, I think he wanted. To, he definitely wanted it, but I said, look, you know, think about it over the weekend. Yeah. Give well, you're not call. a hustler. No, well, I'm not. I'm not going to rush him into it because once he's got it, he's, he can't bring it back. I'm not messing about. No. 
Um, so the bloke said, uh, what sort of wood is it? Carl said, sort of, uh, sort of like a light brown colour. He went, what, beach coloured? <coughs> Carl went, depends what beach you're on. <laughs> Which was nice. <laughs> you do understand there's a wood that's called, called beach. beach. Uh, well, he's, he's happy, he likes the sound of it, nice sure. plum cover. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's Carl going, that'll go with Magnolia, you walls in my He's yeah. just going, I'll tell you what, like, look nice in your spare bedroom. It was like a, well, he an did, episode he did of the changing rooms. It was like listening to an episode of Carl. He did the deal in, in under three minutes, wasn't it? It was pretty song, good, didn't he? He phoned it about halfway through in that song, so yeah. you work pretty quick, Carl, yeah. I've got to say. Yeah. It's yeah. your manx scally way. I'm sure it? we're not allowed to do this, though. No, I think it's highly criminal. Yeah. Have you got anything? Are you getting <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, I am moving shortly, so I mean, I might, I might come in next week. I can have a couple of. I drinks, threw away yeah. a desk the other day. I got to get rid of a bed, um, a chair, because you know I'm pretty tall. <laughs> this is so pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I moved up to London, my dad said, "Well, you want to be careful because I mean, the seating in a lot of these London pads is bad. Seating very low backs, fashionable, isn't it? Fashionable chairs and stuff. You're a big guy, six foot seven. You need like a decent chair." We went to a shop. It was like a second-hand <laughs> furniture yeah. shop, right? Yeah. I bought this chair, very <laughs> high backed. <laughs> what did you buy? I bought a solo. I love yeah, that. <laughs> it's just a chair, so I could sit was in it, my room it? and watch TV. But was it a soft chair or was it a wooden chair? It was chair? kind of like a sort of, uh, it was, well, let me explain, because it's kind of like an armchair, but it's kind of got wooden arms. So I get this chair, I bring it up to London, I think, this is a great that. chair, this is a wonderful chair. I'm gonna, I I'm gonna be it. watching TV, everyone else is Pipe. doing agony. Pipe, you know, yeah, but I've got jacket. this lovely chair, yeah. right? And I brought it up and someone went, they looked at it, they went, isn't that an orthopedic chair? <laughs> and I looked at it again, right, and I realised it's kind of white cleanable. <laughs> It's made of some kind of fabric <laughs> that allows you to just mop it down with a wet what, cloth. Why? Because I think it came from an old people's home. Oh. You know when you see like old people oh, in some no. kind of social room in an old people's home, just yeah. sat watching a little crappy old TV, white. and yeah. they can you can wipe everything clean. It was it's oh. one of those chairs. Oh, that's fantastic. So if anyone's maybe they've got an elderly Didn't you relative, keep slipping off. Just goes like, and it's also the most uncomfortable chair I've because unless you've got chronic back pain, <laughs> it just is, it's just the most uncomfortable chair. It makes you sit bolt upright, We've, if not slightly forward. You've done a good sell on it. I think, uh, <laughs> are the, the phones are going mental. Well, How much you want you, if, if you've had a recent accident, or you've got a disabled, or, or um, or uh, someone in, in the house who's just, uh, elderly, then, um, then you might want to get in touch. I'm happy to, you can take this that off, man, so for uh, 25 wrong. quid. This is so wrong. 25 quid, I'll, oh, I'll take that. Whether well, you're setting up an old people's home, you know, it's a little <laughs> yeah, pet, pet project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't get a lot of grant. We can have- <laughs> exactly. We can have- uh, I mean, and um, because though Steve's such a high flyer, I mean, if it really is a good cause, they just give it to you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's not rush into everything, anything, really. I like to assess each case, you know, individually. Yeah. But so, sure, yeah, certainly sure. if you are a charity, then, then I might go for 20 quid. I can- t you take off my hands for 20 quid. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but otherwise, 25, and I tell you, it's, it's in good condition, cos I haven't really sat on it. Five quid off if you really are You know, and, 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 and there were some stains, I've wiped them clean. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah. Uh, oh dear. Well, that's fantastic, so we've, uh, we've yeah, well, I'll tell you what we should, we should resuscitate next week, Swap Shop. The multicoloured Swap uh, Shop. I, I, honestly, there's it's a, a great format. But there's a couple of things I've always wanted to, to get back out. Swap Shop is one of them, and the other one is Superstars. I don't remember Superstars. Superstars was great because it was like the people of their time. So you'd have like people like nowadays you'd have you'd have Beckham and uh, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, who's the tennis player? Is it R Rizetsky? Yeah, Rizetsky. Yeah, uh, and they they have to compete. So all these people have to compete at each other's sports. And they have to choose seven out of ten sports. And there's a leaderboard and there's a big final. Oh, old Keegan came off his bike. It, it's it's not, it's Jack, not like so it's used to win it. No, no, it's real sports. It's, real proper, it's sports. proper sports. It's hundred meters, tennis, weightlifting, all the real sports. That you you can't do your own sport. Well, I know you're a pretty big uh, guy now in in British TV. You're a bit of a big shot. What do you reckon? Pull some strings. Let's get it back on <laughs> Let's there. Get it back Superstars. On there. Superstars. Sounds fantastic. Me, Johnny Vegas, Peter Kay. <laughs> The bigger fella, <laughs> exactly. I think maybe the comedy comedy superstars. Um, what we got next? We have got a bit of Springsteen, haven't we? Let's play Springsteen. This is uh, a track from his current album, The Rising. A lot of people Brilliant. think Bruce is a bit M O R, a bit middle of the road, or whatever. But you know, I just think piss off. Yeah, <laughs> I just think screw you. Let's I just play think it. yeah, get lost, oh, you. Yeah. Imagine this, you're open top caddy, yeah, you're just going around country. Route 66. You just, you just you're going home maybe for Thanksgiving. Yeah, to see yeah. your folks. That's just just turn up the radio if you are. Play the tune, probably not. Though. That just reminded me when I brought a. So stop it for a second. <laughs> just realised when shambles, I brought when I brought a woman back shambles. and she saw the orthopedic chair. <laughs> <Did> you, <laughs> you bring a woman back to your pad. Oh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and the harness. Yeah. And <laughs> exactly uh, the truss. Yeah. And the, yeah. <laughs> just again, can you give me those two splints? I'm sorry. <laughs> those two splints there. Well, I've got to go. Have you? <laughs> Is this a potty under the bed? <laughs> <laughs> 
The Rising title track from Bruce Springsteen's current album, Great The Rising. Track. Yeah, it's good. Great, tune. it's that, that feeling of so it's melancholy and uplifting. We've had quite a, a, an interactive show so far because we've got a, a call that Superstars is coming back. Mm. It's due to come back in the BBC schedules, which is. Great news. Apparently, was Steve Redgrave is one of them. I just don't think will professional footballers be allowed to take part these days, though. When they aren't fifty works. grand a week, you, you can't really have them falling off bikes and uh, and their ankles. Can't yeah. you? Ian McCaskill last night. <laughs> yeah, I'm celebrity thick. Yeah. Ian McCaskill. <laughs> oh, he fell off his bike three it. times, didn't he? Oh, if it, did, did you see celebrity thick? No, club? I haven't seen it. There was a great moment where they had to go into the, a thing called a bod pod, and you sit in it. It looks quite space age, and it and it analyzes you and it tells you percentage body fat. Now, I think, um, men are meant to be about, sort of, uh, 15 to 25 percent body fat, women are meant to be, like, about 20 to 30 body fat. And they all went in there and, um, they went in there and it said, uh, Ian McCaskill and it came up, uh, 34 percent body fat or whatever. Slightly overweight. Uh, I'm gonna come to the 38 percent of the overweight. Then it went, um, the other one, da 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 da, um, uh, 45 percent body fat, uh, obese. Then it went, Jono. Uh, <laughs> Did it say, uh, I don't want to tell you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it went, uh, 50 percent body fat, um, uh, very obese. Then Rick Waller was sat in there and it came up 60 percent body fat. And I wanted it to come up slug. <laughs> God. But it came up more with it sixty. You are sixty percent fat. So, so sixty percent of him is yeah. fat. Yeah, mm. yeah. Sixty yeah. percent of his entire makeup. That's extraordinary. It is. Well, you yeah. know my feelings about Wallace. Well, don't, let's get on to it. Well, that's I mean, the reason I don't you know, watch the show. Actually, I do feel a bit sorry for him. And he is. He is. I think he is trying. Although the fella there. Um, thinks he's not trying, so I don't know who to believe. Steve. Sure, yeah, I don't know yeah, who to believe yeah. Wallow, and he does get pains in that, and he is a bit. Yeah. The problem know. is, right? He does like his food. Yeah, we we all like our food. But if he didn't do the exercise, he wouldn't be as hungry, and he might not get fat. This is a whole new nutritional outlook. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're saying, don't exercise and carry on eating. And that's, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Can I, no, let me, no, let, let me write that one down. I will send that to the British <laughs> nutritional organisation. Yeah, no, that's good. Carl Pilkington. Okay, well, no, no that's a, it's no, a good. I'm no doctor or anything. <laughs> Whoa, Yo, come off it. Me, me, Stop me, being me. so bloody modest. <laughs> Please. You are a doctor. You're you just, are, yeah. aren't you? Aren't you not, you're not a doctor, seriously. You're not, you didn't qualify. But <laughs> that's interesting. You dropped out early, or? That's mad. That is mad. I mean, you, you, you're as good as Dr. You just, you just didn't get the paperwork or whatever. You just didn't turn yeah. up for the exam. Yeah. Yeah. He was just saying that Bruce brings him, uh, um, depressed him a little bit. Yeah. Because it reminds him of when he worked in the supermarket. And, uh, I said, it's funny how a song can do that, take you right back there. He went, yeah, nothing else can do that. I said, well, actually, smell is the most evocative sense, because smell is linked to memory in the brain. And he went, yeah, they probably said that before music, though. <laughs> And now all signs are going, we've got, we better revisit this because there's music now. Yeah, yeah. We've had this theory knocking around for, you know, ten I went to see Bruce, you'll be pleased to know. I just want uh, the fans of the show to know that I did make it to Bruce Springsteen's concert it. last week. And, uh, he started with that song we just played and it was dynamite. I mean, he never let up. Almost three hours, he rocked the joint. He's 53, he was sliding across, it was pure rock and roll. Pumping our fist, sliding across the floor on his knees, he was jumping on the piano. It was real Jerry Lee Lewis rock and roll. And uh, it was dynamite. And um, I just was looking around though, and, and when I am the trendiest person at a gig, oh, dear. then I'm in trouble. Do you know what I mean? And there was some of the people there, I imagined, you know on Amazon.com, um, it says like, people who bought X also bought Y. Yeah. And I yeah. think people who bought tickets for Bruce probably bought tickets for Mark Knopfler. Yeah, I, Dave Gilmore. Yeah, Pink Floyd without Pink Floyd. But there, Stevie Nicks. But there's also yeah. But then there's also you know the mon all the monsters right. They probably buy stones when they visit. You know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. probably Tina it's the Turner. blue wash jeans. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the small waistcoats. Yeah, over a denim shirt, plaid plaid shirt. Maybe yeah. sort of like Timberlands. Nothing wrong with Timberlands. I'm not. That's libelous. Sure. No. Sure. See, I've done it again. Yeah. But so it was hell getting out. I couldn't find. I mean, I I went to the tube and it was a nightmare because some of the tubes weren't running. I just said, my friend, I'll sort this. You know, da, da, da. stormed off trying to find a cab. Couldn't find a cab. Wandering around Wembley, just livid. I mean, fuming because I couldn't find a cab. Just I was screaming because I was going. I've got money. I'm on the radio. I've had a t TV show. I've got the cash. I'm willing to spend it. There's yeah. no one who can help me get home. And I was. Thinking, I've seen him shout this in Brewer Street, yeah. just to standing in the middle. Go on. And I was thinking to myself, what would you have done there? Because in the end, I just sat in a little calf, had something to eat. But you, I mean, if you couldn't get a cab, what would you have done? Just because there's a couple of, I was looking, there was a couple of hotels <laughs> near Wembley. I was thinking you'd have just checked in. Yeah, and just and stayed till the morning. Yeah, when, when there's a cab, let me know. But I was thinking because you were thinking of going. Would you have booked a cab beforehand? 
Uh, yeah. Would you have- would you have thought to do that? Yeah, I'd have got a cab there and I'd have booked a cab well, somewhere. Wouldn't they, uh, genius. Well, the genius. helicopter just took you back home? Yeah. Oh, he's oh, having a dig, isn't he? He's having a laugh, isn't he? Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Play the ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Death in Vegas. Scorpio Rising. Featuring the voice of, is it Noel Gallagher? Liam, innit? Is it Liam? Sounded a bit like him. Liam, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. alright, innit? Excellent, yeah. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's get this show well and truly on the road. Um, we better start, what, ed educating Ricky next, Carl? What have you got for me? I can't wait for learning. I need learning. I need education. We should just teach explain something. Uh, obviously, for those that have just tuned in, Carl, uh, tries to teach Ricky three things each week. Based on the pun title. And yeah, each of them, uh, each of them, just to tantalise Ricky, is, yeah. um, abbreviated into some kind of headline. It, a cryptic just to clue it. involving a, involving a pun. So what have you got for us oh, this yeah, week? They, what's are, they are really cryptic this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, first story, little headline, is, um, don't worry about him. He candle it. <laughs> he candle it. Yeah. Sounds a bit like he can handle it, but it's yeah. not. Put it. Uh, <laughs> second one. <laughs> uh, oh, get a lobe of this. I'm I'm <laughs> get a lobe of this. <laughs> Some classics. Yeah. Who can forget? Get a lobe of this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Coming soon. And, and stocking eight kilo waterman. <laughs> Go on. Second one. Yeah. I'm committed to this treatment. I'm mm. committed to this treatment. Yeah. All right. Tantalising. Yeah. And the last one, um, uh, the police are causing a bit of a stare. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the way he looks when he says it. I wish, yeah. that, oh, I wish we could see Can't we get Carl on telly? Oh. There's got to be a way. There's we got to be a way. Uh, that, that, with all the cable channels, anyone can get on telly these days. Let's right, get, let, so let's, let's phone up, let's get you on choice or something. Just what? a little, just Carl. What, 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 what are you going for? Oh, he can handle it, I think. Don't worry about him, he can handle it. He can handle yeah. it. Sorry, okay, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's hear this one. Right, are you familiar with the, uh, the phrase, burning the candle at both ends? Yeah. Do you know how it's come about? I know a man who well, does. I, I assumed that it was to get more light in the room. How would that work? Well, they'd put it sideways and light both wicks, so out of one candle they could get no. two. No, go on. No, what it is... I know is, what it means. Uh, it means you're, you're staying, you're doing too much, you're staying up too much, right. you're not getting enough sleep and you're... Well, years ago... Yeah. Um when they didn't have light bulbs and that. Oh yeah, what year is this? Quite literally, literally ages ago specifically. Yeah, quite a bit back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, didn't have light bulbs and that, so they used to have candles when in When did the light bulb come in? Cos I, I can't remember at the moment. What? I, phew, don't know. Okay, go on. So, um, yeah, so they've, they've got no light bulb. You're not, you, you wouldn't know, you're a, doc you're a doctor, you're not a historian, go on. Uh, and people who worked a lot of hours, yeah. How many? Literally lots. They get up early in the morning because they have to be up early. Yeah. And it's dark outside, so they light the candle. Sure. And they wear it out a bit, and then they'd be getting in late as well. Yeah. And like they'd be like, "Oh, it's dark. I'll have to light the candle again." And the burning candle at both ends of the day. So that's where the saying comes from: burning the candle at both ends. So. All right. That's a uh, little lesson. Yeah. yeah lesson good. one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can I have? No, well, no, I you, you can't. Have you can't one, rush yeah. into them, Rick. You've got to. I've got to soak uh, you've in got, that. You've got to soak that one in. Any questions for Carl off the back of that? What do you think? So, so, so people were. I mean, basically, where this comes from is people were <laughs> <burnt. laughs> literally brilliant. The kind of like things they the day. day. Sure. <laughs> there you go. So we've still got. Go on. I'm committed to this treatment. And I can't wait. This is like this is like Christmas Rick, Eve for me. It's it. like Christmas. I've got to open another present now. No, I'm afraid we've got to save it. R Rick, listen. Um, we often get a lot of email correspondence during sure. the show, Rick, uh, which I don't I don't sort of pass on to you because I mean you're busy, you're planning the show and stuff. Sure, you've got sure, a lot of ideas, you've sure. got music and stuff to worry yeah. about. So I check the emails and we get a lot of response. A lot of people that obviously uh, you know want to give us feedback. Uh, just a sample one um, from Richard Anderson. He's just uh, emailed us in here, Rick, because uh, he's been listening to the show. He says, Ricky, your show is appalling. Um, are you actually aware you're on the radio or has someone just secretly stuck a microphone on you? That's from Richard Anderson. So, <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's typical of the kind of feedback Rick we're getting <laughs> really? today. So, it's that um, good, is it? So, that's, that's the kind of, yeah, high positive praise that we're getting. So, uh, I'm, 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 I'm glad Anderson's listening because I wanted him. 
yeah, I was, no, I mean, I, I was gunning for him as a fan. I was worried that early, Anders, early uh, on in our career. So uh, but, uh, I think uh, I think he's hooked now, though. But thanks, uh, Anders, for <laughs> getting in touch. Good work. <laughs> he's sitting Dick. through it for Hellraiser, though, isn't he? Yeah. Well, that's still to come. Oh, still, to come. still to come. Still to come. What we're playing? Uh, a little bit of old dirty bur. I can't. I can't say the word. It's offensive. Old old Is it bollocks? Is it old dirty bollocks? <laughs> no, 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 no. What is it? Old dirty. Old dirty big cock. What is it? What is it? I can't tell you. Breaks up. Brilliant. Yeah? Yeah. Funny word, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's really funny word, what other funny oh, words are there, Although Carl? XFM's a funny word, I just yeah. say the letters out, cos mm. the word doesn't make sense. Just, uh, let me just check Richard Anderson's email again, just remind myself of- Go on. Uh, Ricky, your show is appalling, Richard Anderson. Thanks. What I like about, uh, Dickie, <laughs> Dickie Anders <laughs> is that he's obviously so angry, he's so annoyed by the show <laughs> that he's bothered to email just to get the venom out. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd just think you'd switch over. Well, he's you know, obviously so annoyed, he's he like, knows how, on the computer. He knows how to hurt someone as well. On. Exactly. He's really taken the time out to, I'm uh, to show his disapproval. Of giving up. <laughs> mm, I'll tell um, you what, though, it, can, it, it is pretty hard to listen to. What this? Yeah. I've listened back to the tape that when, we, when you're making that thing for the best of. Yeah. And I. I mean, I sounded like Albert Taplock. I sound- I really sounded like some sort of punch-drunk stroke victim. And I-, I Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I don't remember myself like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, I do apologise. It's- it's not a great planned show, slick word of articulate <laughs> no, sentence, no, no, is it? No, but, no, I mean, no, then, no. who is? But I think, <laughs> I mean, there's so many shows that are, you know, nowadays on radio. I think there's- there's a lot of stuff that's heavily formatted, you know, and there's with, you know, I don't know, presenters who are professional and have got some sort of degree of talent yeah. and ability to sort of string a sentence bored together. You know, I'm thinking Chris Moyles. Yeah. Predominantly. Yeah. But I mean, I'm bored with those, those yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I think we need a little bit of, little bit of calm hey, in our lives. I'm just thinking, actually, I just suddenly struck me, if you want to get rid of your, um, your furniture. Got a buyer. You've already got a buyer. Got a buyer. Because if, if there's any st other stuff, what I, we, <laughs> Uh, we were clearing some stuff out of our place recently and we just dumped some stuff outside on the street because we were going to take it and, and take it to the tip later. Just dump some stuff outside. And I have never seen so many people come out of the woodwork scavenging through our garbage. It was incredible. They were like zombies. Well, that's what I was they saying. They were like flies around shit. Uh, it was when crazy. I said to Carl, when I said to Carl, uh, That's what you should just do. Just dump it outside because it'll get taken. When he went, he said, he said, do you think I asked enough, Andrew? I went, yes, definitely. He went, oh, I could ask. I said, no, don't do that. I said, because you'll end up having to pay the council to take it away. He said, I oh, wouldn't. He said, I'd rather just dump it and let a little homeless fella have it. And <laughs> then he went, and where's the little homeless fella sitting at the desk? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine, right? That I walk past, he's sat outside Hearts, right? The little 24 hour shop. Yeah. He sat outside there and he goes, have you got any change? And they go, I can do better than that. Yeah, here's a chair and table. Here's, here's a, futon. a futon. Yeah. A futon, no less. Not your boring bed, but a trendy, yeah. Well, but the thing is, I, the amazing the number of people that would stop to look at our junk. What? There was a car driving by with a family and kids, perfectly respectable, just driving past, you know, on the way to somewhere, stopped, got out, got the kids out of the car, come on kids, let's just look through this junk. But I like the you idea You said that we were going to Walton Towers, yeah. Dad. No, no, sorry, no time. We're not going this to the zoo, let's look through this rubbish. We're not going looking through people's rubbish Put again, these gloves we? on, look through this shit. Ow! That's a yeah, needle. That's a needle. <laughs> it was, I mean, who does that? It was like a Saturday afternoon. Kids were just gonna go and look through some rubbish. And one guy, this is the most incredible one, one guy, I caught him going through the bins as I came, as I came in. I said, alright, what are you doing? He was one of those homeless guys who likes to remain dignified. Why did you say, what are you doing? Well, because it was my house. I had to go part, I had to squeeze past him. He wasn't in him. your kitchen. He was in our front garden. Oh, was he? Yeah, going through it. He torn the bags open. He was going through it. I said to him, what are you up to? He went, oh yeah, just looking at the, the, the stuff. Don't, don't worry, I'll just, I'll, I'll clean it all up afterwards. Just looking for a few odds and ends, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh well, you can take what you want. You know, it's all going away. Yeah, no, thanks very much, thanks. Yeah. So we went off, right? I didn't think anything of it. I was walking past the shops the following day. There's a little sort of, uh, kind of 7-Eleven, right? I was walking past. I thought, oh, that's interesting. A Gil Scott heroin album for sale. And I looked. I thought, wait a minute, this is all our rubbish. And the guy had set up like a little car boot sale outside the 7 Eleven on the pavement. He'd taken our junk, he'd marked on prices. There's like an old RAC book from 1976 that had been lying in the house, a Yellow Pages. You know, and he'd marked up the How prices. How much is Yellow Pages? So I'm glad you were. What year was 50 that? 50p, I snapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a bargain. <laughs> and um, it was incredible the, the cheek of just selling our junk. Outside. En Enterprise, Carl. You, you, you do that. What do you used to do? You, do, you used uh, to sell flowers. I and sold stuff. flowers. I yeah. sold, uh, sold fizzy drinks at school. Did you? Yeah. What made that you made? It was soda stream, yeah. Yeah. Made, made some, uh... Well, of course, when you were doing your Pilkies making music, your disco, yeah. you used to go into mum's bedroom and find a pair of tights and a cigar. 
Yeah, they, yeah, they'd be prizes. Uh, yeah. Did your dad used to smoke cigars in tights or, or your mum? <laughs> Which one of them? He's just gone. Right, look, let's, let's, uh... Yeah, we're educating Ricky. No, no, no. That's, we'll tease him that. Uh, Rockbusters. Well, I think we should play a tune and come back with Rockbusters. Oh, so the show's falling down. We were going so well, and no, we, it's just the energy, isn't it? The first hour we got through. I'm still uh, in good spirits. Is this, this still good? Is it this I'm show? Enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, I'm a good it's time. still good. Is it? I'll just let me just check because uh, just check what Richard Anderson thinks of it. <laughs> good evening, man. Again, no, he thinks it's appalling. He, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, the Dixter thinks it's appalling. So uh, we should what play a tune because he was prefers this, the music. What's this? Bit of Aqualung. Oh. Aqualung. Aqualung. Rockbusters next. I like that. That's great, isn't it? Aqualung. Good time's gonna come. Well, Carl, we've got loads of ideas. We've got emails coming in left, right and centre. I think you've caused quite a stir. I think you've turned this show around, to be honest. I'm being- honestly, yeah, no, you've done really well. You're actually acting a bit like a producer, isn't he? Mm. And, mm. uh, you're coming through in your own right. Yeah. Um, we've had a great suggestion there. We've had we? a great email here. Let me this, just listen check, to this, Carl. Uh, let me just check. Listen this to is this. From, this is from, uh, Jeff Dunn. He's a big fan of the show and he's just had a genius idea. He's saying, you're moving house, Carl. Why don't Ricky and I come round? We can do a live outside broadcast from your flat. It's we genius. can observe from your kitchen those weirdos that live opposite. Yeah. We can just maybe just wander around, just see the kind of place that you've got, you know, see, maybe check out your record collection, your clothes, what you've got in the bathroom. It'd be amazing. Your futon. It'd be like Louis Theroux. Wouldn't it? We'd we'll be Louis through. Come on, Carl. This is a dynamite idea. Nah. Why? I, I, I don't want you coming around making a mess on that. We won't we'll make a mess. We won't make a mess. We'll take our shoes off. When, when have I ever made a mess in the studio? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Do you know what I mean? We're not going to make a mess. What? What? We're not going to have anything with us. But what's in it for anyone? Well, it's just a fascinating insight into yeah, you. Yeah, but right when I see that little Chinese kid across the road who's <laughs> dancing about in his underpants, yeah. that's in the evening. Yeah. Right? He's not going to be doing that on a Saturday. <laughs> So you'll be disappointed there. Sure. That old, that old woman. But you could sh at least show us the oh, room no, in which he really, dances. Yeah, we say little Chinese kid, he's a 35 year old man, isn't he? Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, that, that's beside the point, you know, we'll find our own amusement. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, and the, the w woman downstairs has got a baby and if we make loads of noise and it's, that gets We're stressed out. We're not gonna out. make noise, are we? Just gonna have a conversation in your flat. Have a cup of tea? Yeah, but if we do an OB, we need to get like a car outside with a big aerial on it and well, the parking's bad round our way. What do you mean you have to do a- what do you mean? To do a outside broadcast. Can't they put in an ISDN line just for the day? No, no, because I'll make a mess of the wall and I'm, I've, I won't get my deposit back. So, <laughs> we'll leave that. <laughs> Thanks right. for the idea. You know he's <laughs> going around painting all the little holes, well, uh, to get his deposit back <laughs> in, the, in the wall. <laughs> he wants to get his deposit back. He's probably cost me about 400 quid redecorating. <laughs> 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 Let's remind people, Carl, of the, uh, the prizes for Rockbusters this week. It's right. dynamite stuff. We've got the David Attenborough DVD Nature Collection. We've got a number of CDs, the best of David Bowie. We've got a Madness CD. Not quite sure whether that's songs uh, from the musical or or their original tunes. Uh, country Legends, two CDs there of uh, great country music, Brilliant. and the uh, remix to XFM compilation. Plus, of course, the big movie prize this week. Um, Hellraiser. Hellraiser. If you haven't seen it already, then I assume you <laughs> have never seen a film before. <laughs> Because I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't seen Hellraiser. <laughs> but obviously you have to be above 18 to join. Uh, Come to on in. Play the Come on in. So, How um, long would you want to be around for? Is this just for the... Just for the show. Couple of hours. Two hours. Did you just get the desk in there? Mm. A live OB. We could check out the futon, we could sing we'll its check, check the fault in, right? Yeah. Oh, you might have sold that by now. In we could have someone it? come round and buy it live on air. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It's great. Uh, great what's... Uh, how, did, how did Graceland start? <laughs> That was, that was his normal house and then he took <laughs> over. <laughs> right, anyway, Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, go on I, then. I give a cryptic clue. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a letter and it makes up a band. He right? never said the word cryptic a few months ago. I love it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel it's like our own little Eliza Doolittle. Yes. <laughs> right, even Richard will like this one. Mm hmm. Um, here we go then. First one. There's I three of them. Go on. And you email in. If this doesn't turn Dicky round, nothing will. Right. This is an email only competition. Email only. Um, right, here's the first one. Uh, initial is B, so it's B. a band starting with B. Okay. Mm. And the cryptic clue is, I don't like them birds, uh, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. I don't like them birds, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. Next one. Right, the next one. Uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Is that a cryptic clue or is that just- <laughs> Is that just a is thought, that just a general know? point? Is that, that's, yeah. That's the cryptic clue. Okay. And the initials there are PD. Okay. And, uh, the last one, 
Uh, that oh, one. I've got that one. That's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, quickly. Oh, <laughs> oh God. And the last one is, uh... Oh, God. That bloke who does... <laughs> Come on! <laughs> He's making me laugh. Come on, Carl. Be professional. Right, right, the last one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, it's making me laugh. Oh, come on, I'll oh, come and read them then. No, no, oh, I got, I got, come I got, on, Carl. Right, here we go. They don't do this on <laughs> Blockbusters on TV, do they? No, come right. on. That bloke who does sport on telly, <laughs> 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 he's got a little kid, right? Uh, initials DC. Uh, what? Right. Is that, was that the clue? I'm completely confused by that. Was that the clue? Yeah, that bloke who does sport on telly, yeah. he's got a little kid, initials DC. Okay, is that a band? Um, or an artist? Uh, it's, oh, well, I'm a not going to tell you. This is a well known <laughs> sandwich. Is it, what is it? Is it Fine. a band or an artist? Right, so just quickly recap. That's okay. It's, 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 it's a Come D. on, Carl. Right. Come on. Quick, quick recap. The first one is B. I don't think them birds should be around in this area. Right, that's B. <laughs> right? Second one, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a few kids. It's a bit weird. That's PD. And the final one, that bloke who does sport on the telly, he's got a little kid. Right? D. C. All right, and uh, it's Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to enter for uh, Hellraiser. Oh, I'll tell you what, continue to do a little theme here of like some old stuff people haven't heard of. If you're under thirty, you've probably never heard of this band. It's also a new thing I want to introduce. So it's uh, it's um, show up Camfield. Camfield right. talks the talk. He doesn't walk the walk. He doesn't play some rock classics on his show because he's scared. I'm going to play the tracks that Camfield's too scared to play. Right. This is Kansas and Carry On Your Way with Sun. All right, Raw Nirvana. Amazing. We we're just talking. We we're getting excited about that. Yeah. He's got an incredible brilliant. voice he has. And Grohl, Dremin, it's, it's brilliant. You know you're right, the new one from Nirvana. Well, we're, it's time for Educating Ricky Part 2, isn't it? I'm yeah. excited, Carl. I'm gonna learn so much <laughs> from this. What's the choices again? What's right, you've got, uh, you've got left, Still, uh, still keep phoning your answers to, uh, um, Email. Email, sorry, yeah. Uh, the answers to Rockbusters. Rock yeah. Right, okay, Educating Ricky Part 2. Um, right. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. Is, is what oh, I'm I've got to go for that one. Yeah? Yeah. Or the other one is the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> he still says it like it's the best thing he's ever come up with, which yeah. the way it is. It could be. Right, go on in. I'm committed to this treatment. Right. Do you know the saying? Oh, is it just sayings now? Uh, are they all sayings this week? No, 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 they're not. Okay. No, the other one isn't. Uh, frog in your throat? <laughs> The saying, there's a frog in your throat. Yeah, I assume, assume it's uh, when you uh, croak a little bit, you sound like a, <coughs> like a frog. No, no. Right, might, might say, seem a bit weird, this one, right? But years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, so, w w what is that clue committed to this treatment? It's about frogs committed. Kermit. <laughs> 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 probably works better with a K and an yeah. ER written well, down. Well, also, if you'd pronounced it committed. Yeah. But uh, not committed. Yeah. <laughs> Committed to this treatment. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on then. That's right, genius. Uh, so yeah. Uh, well, what? You get you go to the doctors and you go with throat certain a bit. Right. And what they did ages ago. Ages ago. What year was this approximately? We are going back quite a bit with this. Oh, one. okay. Go on. Um, and the doctor would <laughs> say. Uh, <laughs> he got committed to this treat. Imagine years ago. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, right, keep your keep your mouth open. I need to look at your tonsils, and the jaw would ache a bit. Cause, because they weren't as quick back then because they didn't have the technology and stuff and they'd sure. have to like stare at it and study it and stuff. Mm. And like they get an achy jaw, right? Keeping their mouth open. Yeah. Like you get, you know, yeah. 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 So, um, they, they'd sat there and they used to always close the mouth and they, it used to annoy the doctor. Yeah. Right? Sure. So what they did, yeah. they used to get a toad. Right. And pour it in the mouth. Rubbish. <laughs> okay. Keep, Rubbish. Keep talking. Keep talking. And, um, that way they couldn't close the mouth because either they'd squash it. Right. Or, apparently you're not allowed to, uh, lick a toad's back. <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor would have them for breaking the law? No, 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 but it's poisonous. <laughs> right, a toad's back. You should never lick a toad's back. Or, or, or put it in your mouth, really. Oh, just, 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 just stop no, no, for a second. Wait, wait, wait. What, what? Can I just ask one question? Go on, yeah, just go on. Ask one question. I've got a few, but no, go on. I, I, sure. My initial thought is, it sounds like a brilliant bit of, of sort of medical uh, knowledge there. It's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. My only thought is, how does the doctor see past the toad? Yeah. At your tonsils? What's he actually looking at with the mouth open? Surely the toad is, is in the like way. Isn't it around in the way? It, it didn't say. No. Uh, sorry, and uh, my, my question, my first question is, was this on the internet? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
uh, Carl, that is bollocks. <laughs> that is, I mean, uh, <laughs> Well, all right then. Let's turn this round. Where does the saying, uh, you got a frog in your throat come uh, from? Uh, probably cause you sound a bit croaky. Probably that. <laughs> yeah. Probably cause you sound a little bit like a frog when <laughs> you've got a sore throat. <laughs> Carl, did you not question it just for a moment when you read it? Just for a second, didn't you think, that seems an odd approach. Firstly, why a frog, of yeah. all the different because species- Because it's poisonous, it's poisonous. A toad- no, So a toad, so it's a toad right. as well. Yeah, well, that it worked, I'm committed, worked- No, 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 I was gonna change it to, uh, have you heard the news, toad day? <laughs> <laughs> but I went with, I went with the frog. <laughs> Right, so, right. so, so that's rubbish. So that's rubbish. Next, um, <laughs> can I have, um... <laughs> let's play a tune, let's come up with the God. last one. Listen, oh. oh, can Don't I just play? No, just play it, just play it. Yeah? Yo, Carl. <laughs> I have to thank my, uh, mate Dave who sent me an incredible four-disc compilation. That was one of the tunes on there. It looks uh, professional, it's amazing. It's incredible, the effort yeah. Oh, he's gone to too much effort. Uh, Ben Queller, uh, it's a track called In Other Words from his album Sha Sha. Open wide? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. Oh, is it Duncan? You've actually got a frog in your throat. Uh, I, I didn't get there. I put it in there. <laughs> That's the most ludicrous story I've ever heard, Carl. Why don't you think when you read these things? I, I think there's always gonna be a bit of truth in all of these. I mean, that fella called up, didn't he, and said, um, he said, I'm not sure about the, you know, putting a frog in your throat if you've got, ton you know, problems with your tonsils or whatever. But he said, years ago, um, if someone had toothache, yeah. they'd get hold of a frog and strap yeah. it to the face. Yeah, sure. So maybe down the line, you know, maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe they did. Uh, 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 I think Caligula made what is emperor uh, a horse and emperor as well. But I mean, you know, it doesn't go on. Um, Dick Anderson's been back in touch. Excellent. Um, I think so. He's obviously we've listening. turned him round. Well, he loves it now. He's been he? tuning in. He, he says, loves um, it now. He says, Ricky, thanks for a really forgettable two hours of radio. I think I'll spend the time next week counting my feet. That's from Richard Anderson. So, uh, we've turned him round. We've turned no, him do round. you know where the phrase counting my feet comes from? Well, in the olden days, right, and I'm talking ages ago, when you really loved something, yeah. you used to, as a, as a sign of respect, like say a radio show, mm. you'd count your feet. Mm. And yeah. that's where that comes from, that's where Carl. It comes from. Well, what, what about the, uh, the frog thing? With what? A, it's with nonsense. A with a poisonous back. It's rubbish. That's true. No, the toad toes have, um, uh, the, the secretions in there. The, the, why? The, the, why, why, why? They didn't put it in people's mouths. No, so, why? well, I'll tell you why. When a a, 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 a badger or a, a heron tastes the toad, it's horrible. Blech. The toad might die, but it, it's for the good of the species, because then, think how many toads, like, looking like that heron could eat in its lifetime. So, the fact that one toad sacrificed itself, all those other toads in that heron's manner but, will be but safe. But why, why, I mean, you know, we're, we've talked about animals a lot. On the show, right? Yeah. And when God made a toad, sure, right? right? Okay. Well, so on, I'm gonna stop you there. I'm gonna stop you there. Stop don't, away. Don't. Just let him carry on. Right. Okay. Like, there's a, there's annoying things out there. You know, jellyfish is a big problem with me. I don't understand why <laughs> what they do in the sea and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But we, we'll leave them. God's right? a problem we, we for me. But go on. We won't. We won't talk about jellyfish. No. With the toad, right? Um, if it's to protect itself. Yeah. Right, now no, say- No, protect itself, it's to protect his species. No, 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 yeah, but that, surely, right, if, if the toad had a choice, if God said, right, what I'm gonna do for you here, um, you can have something like a lobster's got claws, big claws to have a fight, <laughs> or I can give you something that if someone's having a go at you, you've got to try and persuade them to lick you back <laughs> as, as a defence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What <laughs> use is, right, oh, right. God's- well, I, t I tell you why. What is God? The up fact to? that there are still toads around is a testament to that defence working. That's all I'm going to say. Okay? If the toad had died out, you'd have a point. But they're still around. It works. All right. And all right. don't start slagging God off. <laughs> He's got a lot on his plate. <laughs> he, I mean, he, basically, I think he took on too much. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly in one week. Exactly. It was crazy. <laughs> Danger High Voltage, Electric 6, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Carl's getting all flustered because I put an elastic band around his head. And we've had a definition of- Well, uh, hang on a sec, the because throat. there's an update to that, really. Go on. Um, we did just have, uh, one, uh, definition here of, uh, a frog in the throat. Apparently this has come from some, uh, internet site, so who knows, uh, how convincing it is. But it says, frog in the throat meaning suffering from temporary hoarseness, needing to clear the throat. Origin from the old English frogger meaning hoarseness. That's from Chris. Now that sounds slightly suspect to me. Why? But, uh, frogger? I mean, it, it seems odd that it would derive from that when it so clearly appears to be 
<coughs> you sound like a frog when you when you have a sore throat. Yeah, but 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 the word frog could mm. come from frogger because it sounds I like it. I didn't know it wasn't frogger a game you could play on the yeah, uh, yeah, on the spectrum. spectrum. Oh, that's yeah. a great game. Yeah. But yeah. listen, hang on, there's an update to that because uh, just to well, the common frog, of course, Rana Temperara, that's the Latin name. Well, you, your toad is Buffo Buffo. Right. You may be trying to show off, but I think <laughs> you're about to embarrass yourself as Go well, on. because you've been slagging off young Carl. Yeah. It says here, another email, it doesn't tell us who it's from. Although it's hard to believe now, at one time, medieval physicians believed that the secretions of a frog could cure a cough if they were coated on the throat of the patient. Yeah. That in itself yeah. sounds repulsive, but what makes the idea even worse is the application of the secretions. Instead of painting the treatment on, something which may also have seemed uh, rational, a live frog was placed into the mouth of the sufferer, where it remained until the physician decided that the treatment was complete. Right. Uh, apparently Shakespeare's son-in-law, that's a question mark, I don't know what that means. Anyway, it's no wonder that today a froggy or croaky attempt at speech is said to be a frog in your throat. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you can see that what's happened there is Carl's misread or been slightly misinformed about uh, a medieval practice. In a yeah, sense, yeah. you're both winners, just for taking part. <laughs> 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 what's your yeah. final one, Carl? Right, the final story <laughs> is, um, the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Um, it's about this fella. Uh, I think it's in England somewhere. Yeah. Don't know when it happened, but, uh... Literally ages ago, or...? Basic, well, it's when, I think it's when they were trying to crack down on, like, drunken people walking about in the street. Oh, yeah. And they found this Saturday. fella. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, that one. And, uh, found this fella, and, uh, all the local people were saying, oh, look at him wandering around, he's, he's drunk and what have you. That's not right. Get the police in. He got arrested and that, and they got him in the court, and, uh, the judge was there, and he says, uh, so, you know, what's all this... What's going on? What are you doing wandering about when you've had a drink? You know the rules. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. You had a glazed expression on your face. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, he only- he only had a glass eye. So Did he have two glass eyes? No, he had one. But that okay. was- th th they, they were about to sort of lock him up. Was he what, a bit pissed up as well? Well, he was- he was pretty livid. <laughs> <laughs> but was he also drunk with a glass eye? No, no, that's oh, the right. weird thing. He right. wasn't even- he hadn't even had a drink. So they just thought because he had a weird stare. Because- because his eyes were all glazed. Yeah. Well, uh, well, where'd you get this from? Why are you telling me this? <laughs> <It's just not> <laughs> <laughs> no, but why are you telling me this? I don't- I don't- I mean, thank you, because it's, you know, killed a couple of minutes, but why is this educating me? What are you- what are you telling me because here? Because the, the, there's a bit of a thing there, a bit of a fable, that don't always judge a book by its cover. Yeah? So, the guy, he hadn't even had a drink. He's probably just been shopping. Yeah. Uh, walking down the street and everyone's like getting involved. Like, what's he doing? He I shouldn't. Don't, hang on, I don't understand. He's walking down the street, happens to have a glass eye. He was doing nothing else to suggest he was drunk. You don't pick people up just because their eye looks like that. But even know. if it happened, why are you telling me? With no, with no particular detail. Oh. I know this, but then we're gonna get people- It's not enough information. I know, yeah. No, oh. th th there's a bit of a lesson there, educating Ricky. Just, you know, just watch what you say. Uh, don't always jump to conclusions. I'm just oh, 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 the, the only education I can take from that is that, um, if I ever do become a policeman, I shouldn't just arrest people because they look a bit drunk. I should just <laughs> tap their eye with a pen and go, goes, <laughs> Oh, okay, on you on go. You go. Well, <laughs> on you go, yeah. Guys, can I just stop you there? I'm just gonna email Richard Anderson and tell him I agree. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, we're running out of time and that. <laughs> Oh, we've got how the where did the phrase got, frog in the throat come from? We've got, we've got we've, it here, he's been, he's been told well, it. Well, Can we play a tune and come back with that? Have well, we got anything lined up? Uh, yeah, we've got the song with a story in it. Come on, okay. Carl, let's do something. Quick, play a record. Song with a story in it. But never mind week. that, just, they're listening. We, this, we discussed this off air, come on. Play a record. Right, play it. It's Kinks. For, yeah. Kinks. It's, Kinks. It's a song with a good story in it. You gotta listen to the words. <laughs> Carl, what was that? That was your little song that's with a story. Uh, that's another it? little feature that we do every Saturday. Uh, Little so song. make sure you tune in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a song that's got a good story in it. There's a lot of music about these what's days. What's that story that, about then? What's that, that story you about? You don't know what they're going on about. Whereas that, classic from the Kinks called Lola. Yeah, what's it about? Um, I'd listened to it for the first time properly this morning. Yeah. And what I've worked out from it is, is a fella who goes out for a normal Saturday night out, he's yeah. in Soho. Yeah. He's having a, he's having a Coca-Cola or whatever. And he, uh, yeah. he sees, he sees this woman and he thinks, yeah, she's alright. Yeah. Won't mind a bit of that. So he wanders over and he sort of gets to talking to her. He looks at her and she's got a great figure, nice face and all that. Lovely knob. And, uh, and she speaks and he goes, yeah. oh God, got a bit of a bloke's a frog voice. Throat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got a yeah. bit of a voice like a bloke. But he thought, but you know, that's her only down point. Sure. Yeah. So he's, he dances around with her and I think he sits on his knee, I think he said. Yeah. Anyway, it turns out it's a fella. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, a sobering yeah. lesson. Yeah. Um, um, what do you take from that? 
look away sort of- if you- if you think you might be talking to, uh, a, a bloke, bloke in dress, dress, just look at it Adam- his sort of Adam's apple. What? <laughs> <laughs> and okay. he'll probably have a hairier arse than- <laughs> than a woman. Yeah, I think you've gone too far away then, though. <laughs> I think you've already- I think you're- <laughs> you're already getting too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> no, pun intended, definitely. There was a pun intended. Oh, was it? All right, was it? Yes. All right, all right. Okay, well, don't be disgusting then. <laughs> right, okay, right. Um, the, the, uh, results of, um, what we, was we ain't got a winner for the first time. Yes, no, we, we have. We've done this feature for- We've got loads of winners. No, we haven't. We've done this feature for three weeks. This is the first time I've, um, I've managed to sort of- What? Well, let's go through them then. They're what have they got wrong? The first one. The right, first one. What the was the question? Well, hang on. Clue? Let's just let's what? just let's do them in reverse order for a second. So what's what's the last one? The last one. The clue was that bloke does uh, does sport on the telly and he's got a little kid. What's that? That's Destiny's Child. Des, who does ITV Sport, oh, that's he's got terrible, a Tiny's man. Child, right? No, that's, they, that's cut fine, yeah, they got that. Okay, that's Destiny's Child. What's the one? What's the, what's the middle one? Right, the middle one. Tiny's Child. The second one was. He doesn't like women. Yeah, he's got a couple of kids. That, that's a bit weird. Yeah, right. That was PD. That was Puff Daddy. That is offensive. Go on. But that, it's not Puff Daddy. It's Puff Daddy, and he's not even called that anymore. He's called P Diddy. Well, okay, yeah, fair yeah. enough. But they got that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and if so, if I'm being tight, these lot are as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, tight means being something in Manchester. Go on. Right, and the first, the first one that they, they're having problems with, I don't think them birds should be a, allowed in this They've area. They've got it. Boys zone. It's not- it's not boy's own. It's- what's the clue again? I don't think them birds should be allowed in this area. That is perfect. A boy zone. No birds. No women. No women, yeah, birds, right? A boy zone. Sorry, Carl. If that isn't the answer, their clue is better than yours. That is brilliant. What was your- boy zone, it works perfectly. What's your answer then? Bangles. <laughs> what? I have no idea what that means. Like seagulls. So you- you don't want them in this area, so you're banning them. Bangles. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Well, give it to Boyzone, cos Boyzone's better. Don't be to be loud in this area, it's a Boyzone. I boy think zone. we should have a rollover. <laughs> Carl beat them. Carl beat them. You have to use his logic, surely. But theirs works. You can't do what am I thinking. No, that's not what I'm thinking. It perfectly- it works perfectly. I think you've got to give it to the- the ones that got the- the Boyzone. Well, how about, right, because they didn't actually get into my- my head that I might well, thinking, heaven right? forbid. How about we just keep back the David Attenborough and they can have- I'll chuck in the Hellraiser, right? <laughs> okay. And, Most of you. And, uh, <laughs> Blondie album and the Madness yeah, one. Yeah, okay, pick a winner at random. Pick Steve. a winner, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Paul Sloman, who got those answers, uh, and he also says, P.S. Carl, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'm <laughs> Brilliant. giving that to Paul, and uh, good luck to him. <laughs> right, well. He's got a crazy night uh, well, tonight. If we can rush these over to him, he's got I, a cracking yeah, uh, Saturday, yeah. Saturday night. Well, well, if I'm a moron, I might get your address wrong when I send them to you. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Coming yeah. right back at you, Paul. Yes. <laughs> right. Do you want to play your song? Is this oh, I was annoyed, cos well, I didn't get banned goals. A song from, uh, a song for the ladies. I think we seem to have missed this a lot of weeks, but, so this sure. is- uh, I've been wanting to play this for ages. to for forget things and that. This is a band at Frente, who kind of came and went and oh, no yeah. one was particularly interested, but they did this- do this lovely acoustic version of the new order tune, Bizarre Love Triangle, oh, right. and this just shows you how incredible the melodies and the- and the words and everything are. Brilliant, I'm uh, playing. New Order, just uh, play this card. Good night. Bye bye. Is bye this bye. the week? Do you reckon Richard Anderson will be back next week? Yeah, Richard Anderson will not miss this show. Excellent. <laughs>